Let's talk about some of these, you know, sort of short bursts of physical activity, starting with uh, the vigorous intermittent lifestyle activity studies. These are the VILPA studies. Um, we've talked about these before on the podcast. Marty Kabbalah came on. He's been a co-author on some of these papers um, talking about this concept where, you know, researchers are using these accelerometers. They are measuring people's everyday movement in these short bursts that they don't necessarily consider if you sit down and ask them about their physical activity for the past week, right? So these short bursts of, you know, carrying groceries up three flights of stairs, or I raced to the get to catch my, you know, subway because I didn't want to miss it. Or yeah, I was playing with my new four month old puppy, puppy like I do twice a day or whatever. Like these are short bursts of your physical activity where you're getting your heart rate up in everyday situations. It's not necessarily a structured exercise snack, which, you know, also is another way of doing that. But it's, again, it's the stuff that people are just sort of everyday doing as part of their lives. And um, there's just, I think, mounting evidence now. There's beneficial outcomes with these types of short bursts of physical activity that we just can't ignore. We just can't ignore it anymore. And I've probably s cited this one nature study like a million times. So I, I for forgive me for the people that have heard me say this a million times. I think times. you're responsible probably for the, I don't know, however many like downloads of that article on their website they have. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty popular. Yeah. It's pretty popular um, um, study. So people, these, these short VILPAs can be anywhere between one minute to three minutes in length. You know, they're, they're, they're not super long. It's certainly not 10 minute on the Peloton, right? One to three minutes. And they're done multiple times a day, right? Because it's like just your everyday life is what we're talking about. And so I, one of the most profound findings of the study I like to talk about, one of the, one of the VILPA studies, is um, on the upper end of that. So people that are doing like the three minutes short burst, and they're doing that three times a day. So a total of almost 10 minutes a day, right? It's like nine minutes a day they're getting this physical activity. And those individuals have a 50% reduction in cardiovascular related mortality, 40% reduction in all cause mortality, 40% reduction in cancer related mortality. Pretty robust. I mean, especially if you start looking at some of these other studies where people are engaging in their structured physical activity based on their memories and their their brain's ability to recall in the last week what they've done, it's even more robust than some of that. And and the reason I like that and and I know that you feel the same is that because it's actually capturing what's really going on. It's capturing the real movement here. And um, so these studies, these these vis vigorous intensity lifestyle studies, there's multiple studies of them. There was one also that was recently done in women and looking at like some of their um, their cardiovascular disease risk. And it was is pretty profound, I think. So some of the some of the risks in the women. Um, let's see if I can find that study. Yeah, so it was a 45% lower risk of major cardiovascular events in women doing VILPA, and they were just doing 3.4 minutes per day. So this is much less than nine minutes, as I just discussed. So they were doing 3.4 minutes of VILPAs per day, and that's a 45% lower risk of major cardiovascular events, a 67% lower risk of heart failure compared to the women that weren't doing any of these physical activity bursts throughout the day. And if you think about that, that's not a lot of time. And you know, we all have aging parents. Like, like, just imagine if we could get them to do four minutes a day of some kind of vigorous intensity activity. Now, maybe your parents are retired and they're not necessarily trying to get to the subway or the train or whatever. It's going to be more of a structured exercise snack. And I'll let you kind of talk about some of that. But like, you, you know, they can engage in jumping jacks or maybe chair squats or people that are, you know, maybe not older. They can do burpees or, you know, you know, body weight squats or, you know, push ups, like a combination of all these things. Um, and we're talking about really having a pretty outsized effect on reducing some of these negative health outcomes. Um, and the other thing is, is that what was so interesting is there's another study that really, it was a VILPA study. When I say VILPA, again, people, I'm talking about vigorous intermittent lifestyle physical activity. This is not something, this, is, this isn't going to the gym and doing Peloton. This is just your movement throughout the day um, being as measured by with an accelerometer. Um, the benefits were equivalent to people that were doing structured exercise, right? So there was like 62,000 people um, who actually did exercise and they compared that to people who were doing VILPA. And it was crazy, but the same outcomes in terms of risk reduction, it was comparable. And I love that. I love it so much because it really, it really shows that your body doesn't care if it's structured exercise or not. It just wants the movement. It just wants the movement. So 
super important to, to, to point out. Yeah. And a lot of those studies, most of those studies too, were in non-exercisers. So they were in people who reported or said that, you know, I don't regularly engage in structured exercise and I just, then they just did VILPA. So the non-exercisers benefited that. And like you said, similar to people who exercise, which is kind of a crazy finding. Um, and it's interesting because reading all of these studies and in the past few years is, is something that I definitely had changed my mind on in that I used to think, oh, if you're not going to the gym for 30 to 40 minutes, and obviously it depends on the goal you're training for. If you're training for a competition or something, you need to do a dedicated training session. But if it's kind of just for health outcomes, it used to be oh, you 15 minutes at least. And if you're not doing 30 to 45, it's kind of a waste of time. But now it just seems that even if it's less than 10 minutes, and they even removed it from the physical activity guidelines. The guidelines used to say, 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous or 150 to 300 minutes of moderate performed in bouts of 10 minutes or longer. And they actually nixed that part from the guidelines. It's not even in there anymore. So they no longer acknowledge that you need to do it in 10 minutes or more. You can do it in whatever length bout you want to, obviously probably a minute, maybe minimum, but to four minutes is great. And so it's something that I've changed my mind on personally in regards to if I'm talking to people about how they should do activity, it's no longer, it needs to be 30 minutes or more. It's just like accumulate, accumulate, accumulate as much as you can. Like you said, your body, it really doesn't care. It's not, your body doesn't have a watch or a clock where it's measuring your physical activity. It kind of just knows like how much you're doing over the day and the stimulus that it's that it's getting, for sure. Yeah, and I was talking to someone yesterday about this who you know, is interested in health and wants to be healthy, but like hates exercise. And their response was, thank God, like the running with my dog that I'll like do in bursts or like with my kid, like, counts. And I think that's important because it's not that we're disincentivizing people to not engage in structured exercise. We're rewarding people who do this unstructured exercise. And we're saying, keep doing it. It matters. It adds up. And I'm totally with you on it. You know, these, these VILPA studies, these vigorous intermittent lifestyle physical activity studies have really changed my mind as well. I was probably less of a snob than you because you're an endurance athlete, <laughs> but I was somewhat of a snob thinking, like, no, you have to like, you have to have structured time and like, you know, get your heart rate up and really like dedicate time to this. And, and these studies, even at first I was kind of like, well, how is it, you know, okay, let's say 10, 10 minutes a day, you're doing that every day. So that's what 70 minutes. It was even less than that it was nine minutes. So it was even less. Right. So like, you're like, okay, around 70 minutes a week, I'm getting a 50% reduction in, in cardiovascular related mortality. But the guidelines say 75 minutes a week is the minimum. Now I get it. Like this study is saying, no, we underestimated what the vigorous, you know, activity really is giving you in terms of benefit for these health outcomes, right? Because of the way everything was calculated. It wasn't based on health outcome data and it wasn't based on, you know, actual empirical data measuring, you know, how vigorous, you know, your exercise is and how that correlates to health outcomes. And so this is all, it's so important 